Dope. All right, we are. What? I said dope. Oh, dope. I thought you said nope. <laughs> Oh, there's a difference. There is a difference. It's a big difference. One is an affirmative and the other is a negative. Considerable difference. Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Fantasy for the Ages, a show where father and son sit down and welcome you for the first time or other times but not necessarily back (laughs) and talk about fantasy i'm the son in that equation zach and i'm the father jim just shaking his head at his son last time you gave me such a hard you just don't know what to do with this opening you gave me such a hard time about saying (laughs) welcome back and so i was like i guess i shouldn't be presumptive i won't say welcome back but now i'm just like you tried not to say back and you choked it's gonna be a whole mess of things we're gonna keep trying new things every episode and um it's never gonna sound great but that's the good part there you go well speaking of trying new things yes we are doing something new today for our video connection we're actually using discord so for any of you who are patrons and can jump in and listen to our live recordings we're hoping that not only will you be able to listen you'll be able to watch so when i gesture and make weird suggestions with my hands instead of just my voice you'll get the joke too well there you go yeah most of us uh, are somewhat comical with some of our gestures. We we do tend to uh, make somewhat fools of ourselves at times. So why not let other people enjoy that? Anyways, how you doing, Dad? I'm doing great. It's been a, a fine week. It's still been very pleasant weather. I mean, noticing it's getting darker earlier. More so, it's not getting as light as early. So clearly, we're at the end of summer, getting near the end of summer. But the weather is still really pleasant here. And I had a pretty decent week. But how about you, son? I understand you had a few things that were pretty cool this week. I I mean, just a a couple. I got older, because that happens. Happy late birthday to me, I guess. I got a job, so that's a good thing, having an actual source of income. And, honestly, the weird thing, the most interesting that I'm going to talk about here and now, I had to take a drug test. I've never had to take one of those. Ooh. Did you pass? Well, technically, I don't know yet, but I will. I know what's what is being <laughs> tested, and I have none of that in my system. That's a very good thing. Yeah, but it was a whole mess. I went in yesterday on my birthday to get tested, and there was something wrong in the system, so things weren't talking, and they were like, can't do it today. And I was like, oh. But then I went in, and they let me pee in a cup today, so I'm good. Joyful. You shouldn't have to be subjected to that on your birthday, I just wanted all. to get it out of the way. <laughs> That was a, you know, a less than delightful thing to have on a birthday, but there was something else really fun for the birthday, and I don't think they did it just for your birthday, but the freaking Wheel of Time teaser trailer. Oh, yeah, that. Trailer. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, happy birthday, Zach. Here you go from Amazon Prime. I think it's really funny. <laughs> Way back, we were on an episode of Talk Run Riyadh. And I think I said something along the lines of, we'll actually get a trailer, like, on my birthday, maybe. Turns out we did. So, I'm sorry, but I was right. (laughs) Well, you don't have to be sorry. We're all pretty happy about that trailer having come out. out, And I'm jumping ahead. You know, we've got some other things I want to talk about, too. But I'm on the trailer, so let's just talk about the trailer for a moment. let's do it. Freaking awesome. Yeah. I've watched it so many times. I couldn't tell you how many now. I have completely lost track. It just doesn't get old. Since I had a birthday and was doing the odds and ends here and there, I've only actually watched it once so far. I do intend... Wow. I know, it's crazy. I do intend to go back through it and then go back through it again and then go back through it at like 0.25 speed. But I mean, I enjoyed what I saw. No, I went through it basically frame by frame. (laughs) I kept stopping it so I could look around and what do I see and what do I recognize and what does that mean? And it it was just fun. I mean, that was after I'd watched it already like 10 times or so at full speed. And then since I've watched it more and even your mother has watched it once now on the big screen. Yeah, very cool. We have confirmation of so many things that we've been speculating about for a long time. And that was pretty cool. 
one of the things that, of course, we have confirmation mm-hmm. on is we only have to wait till November 19th. I know, and I now. saw supposedly we're getting the first three episodes on the 19th. Mm-hmm. And then weekly drops after that. So I'm definitely going to be restructuring my schedule. i got to <laughs> watch those episodes as soon as I can. Uh, it'll be a good time. I'm excited. Now, one of our listeners uh, did ask just a little bit ago on, on Twitter if we were going to be doing a breakdown episode you know, of our reactions to it. And what did we see? What do we think? Because, you know, a lot of it, people are speculating Mm -hmm. what's there. There's not an actual playbook issued by Amazon Prime or (laughs) Rafe Judkins to, to, to tell us everything. I'm down for doing a special episode like that. What do you think? I absolutely am as well. Again, I want to watch it a couple more times before I actually review it. But that's just on me (laughs) and the fact that I haven't watched it more than once yet. All right. That sounds good. Now, something I would suggest that you don't do, and I will commit not to do as well, is to not watch the Dusty Wheels. Excellent. Like 12 hours of coverage. Well, that's because they have amazing coverage and will have talked about literally (laughs) any and every possible outcome. And if you've got the time, absolutely, you should go check that out. Oh, yes. Totally. I won't yet, but I will watch at least sections of it after we've done any of our coverage. Right, and what they did is way deeper oh, yeah. than anything we will do. I, I intend to watch it, but I was too busy to watch it yesterday and too busy to watch any of it today. So I'm like, okay, we'll hold off. We'll spend like 30, 40 minutes, not 12 hours. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But this way we won't be polluted by what their ideas were. We can be our our fresh thoughts on it. That's fair. So we'll make sure we get it in somewhere maybe on this Labor Day weekend. Definitely. And then, then we'll pump it out as soon as we mm-hmm. can. All right. So, back to some other normal things. What are you drinking today, Zach? I was just finishing up dinner, sat down, and my girlfriend Rach is over, and I was like, no, no, just make me something simple, please. Like, maybe just throw some rum and Dr. Pepper together. And uh, she did, so I have no idea how strong it is. It depends on how much (laughs) she wants me to drink tonight. Oh. But it's quite normal and quite tasty. I see you've got a nice uh, glowing lightsaber in it well, again. Well, I've just like decided these are great stir sticks. I've started stirring everything yeah. from drinks to coffee in the morning. Why not? Because they're a little too fat for good chopsticks, but they're really fun to stir drinks. Perfect. All right. What are you drinking? Well, my drink is, I call it the Black Aja's Secret. And the recipe is, of course, in our Discord and Drink Recipe channel and on Instagram. Did you say the Black Aja's Secret? I did. You notice the color? I find that kind of funny because it's red. It is. Are you just saying the Red Aja is the Black Aja? That seems very presumptive of you. Raffo, my friend. Raffo. (laughs) Oh, frog goes in right when I try to say that. Raffo. So, um, hmm. Maybe I'm suggesting something. Maybe I'm not. Maybe the drink just didn't turn out as dark as I meant. Maybe it's a red herring. Who knows? Oh, nicely done. Nicely done. This is a very boozy drink. Tequila, vodka, gin, rum, Chambord again. I had to actually go out and buy more. I'd used it all up. You had to get more? I'm impressed. And then a little sour mix. So that's it. It's it's nice. Simple, tasty, red. A few other things I want to touch base on before we jump into our content. One, you've got that scratch off map now. I do. It's not complete because I realized, so I scratched, it's got flags, it's got countries. I've been scratching. I haven't been scratching all the time, (laughs) but I have realized when you hold a little scratcher thingamajig in your hand and you're scratching away at a large map for a long period of time, your hand starts cramping, it starts hurting, and I'm just like, I'm not willing <laughs> to give myself, like, carpal tunnel just for scratching this map. So it's it's a little bit at a time. It's great we have so many listeners all over the world, though, that it's giving you hand cramps oh, yeah. trying to get it all scratched. I'd yes. argue I'm probably Marvelous. about halfway through scratching all the countries. So it should, by, like, the time this episode drops officially, be done and scratched. Okay. Well, good and bad news, I have no new countries to add today, so the list didn't get any longer. That is both good and bad news. You are correct. (laughs) What else we got? I want to repeat the reminder to our listeners that we do have some new Patreon tiers now. So if you've been thinking, hmm, maybe I want to become a patron, because I really like the show. I listen to these guys all the time, and... And I'd like to support them and maybe listen to some live recordings and and whatnot. 
check out our Patreon page. The link is in our show notes, as always. Or you can just go to Patreon, look for Fantasy for the Ages. But we've got some new ways things are structured, ways to access our patron-only mm-hmm. content, ways that you can get merch for being a supporter of the show. So check that out. And, of course, merch. You don't have to be a patron to get our merchandise. If you want it, you can just go get it. Yeah, the link to our merch store is also in our show notes. So just wanted to throw that out there. One last thing. Mm -hmm. On Discord, of course, there's a live recording space where you can participate with us when we're doing uh, our shows here. But you've been busy. But we've also got... Oh, man, we've got so many things on Discord people can interact with. And we did. We added a few new things lately. Uh, requests from people who are joining us that we've got a channel now for the Ryria Chronicles. We've got a number of fans excited talking in there. I added, because I like it, Star Wars versus Star Trek. Just throw a bunch of memes, have some fun debating. I mean, I love them both, but it's a fun place. (laughs) And since we've got that Wheel of Time trailer now, I added a section just for Wheel of Time TV stuff. Mm -hmm. Because, hey... Why not? We're going to have a lot of things to talk about there. Jordo thought it would be a great idea. I totally agreed. We got that in there now. It's already been a great place and Uh, a great place to explore all the new, depends on how you want to call them, GIFs or GIFs. I'm not really going to come at you either way. (laughs) As long as you understand how to use them, you're good. But we're getting a lot more, especially with this trailer, so it's a good place to share those. Yes, share the joy. Share the love. All right. That's all we got. Let's jump into our content then, Wait, yes? we have actual content? We do. We did not come on just a yak. I thought this was just an episode for announcements. No, no. What? We're going right back into the Dragon Reborn, and we're starting at chapter 13 today. All right, let's do it. Punishment. Let's punishment. Not do it. Let's not do punishments. We're just... I don't want to be punished. I'm not <laughs> feeling it today. Well, good thing you're all the way in Texas, and I can't punish you anymore. You never really <laughs> were one for punishment, per se. Well, you never really were one as, to get caught. That's accurate. Um, <laughs> as far as my <laughs> AP psych teacher in high school said, punishment doesn't work. Negative reinforcement does. But punishment, it's not really effective at actually teaching behavior, just teaching how to get away with behavior. Got it. That's a little controversial okay. as well. But I like thinking of it. Well, you know, in the Wheel of Time, they have a different idea of punishment, and it's a little more old school. I don't know. I, th- I think, minor spoiler warning, I think that that statement is proven partially true. Partially true that it's old school? No, that punishment doesn't actually work. Ah, it works with some people. Anyways. But maybe not fully. Let's get into the now, yeah. not the later. Okay. In chapter 13, we're in Egwene's POV. Indeed. And it starts out that she's sitting in her novice room. As one does. Yes, pondering the situation that's got them planted there. She's in her room. Elaine's in her room right next door. We imagine Nynaeve is off in her room up in the accepted quarters. Probably pacing and tugging a braid. Probably. And they're in these rooms because they're being treated like runaways, if you recall. Mm -hmm. And they were sent to their rooms with accepted guarding outside the doors. They're basically being treated like these are cells. You are locked in here. But they were told they don't need to use the actual cells. Right. But she's feeling kind of trapped. I can't go anywhere. I'm not supposed to talk to anybody. And she's, remember, a little little twitchy still Mm -hmm. after her captivity as a demone. So she's, this is not feeling real good. She may not be physically restrained, but she is confined. And psychological restraint is still restraint. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, they're stuck in here for an indeterminable amount of time. It's until the Amerlin seat calls for them. Could be today, could be seven hours, and meanwhile, we're assuming Matt maybe's getting healed. They don't really know. Right. She decides to take a slight risk and circumvent this rule, don't talk to anyone, by using that little peephole mm-hmm. between her room and Elaine's room, and... Let's have a conversation. Yeah, we can still chat with each other. Yeah. Whispering. Because again, there's guards outside. You know, they don't want to be overheard just in case that gets them in trouble. So she whispers and bam, right away. Yeah, Elaine's there. Elaine's ready to talk. Mm -hmm. And what do they talk about? Well, they talk about the situation. Specifically, this sucks. It's not fair. (laughs) It's a little (laughs) whiny, but at the same time, like, it's a valid whining. 
Seriously. They're like, we helped discover Leandrin is Black Aja. Yeah. They brought the we Horn of Valir. brought the Horn of Valir. And right. are they being praised for discovering insurgents and returning wonderful artifacts for the last battle? No, they're being locked in their rooms. It's like, where's our parade? You know, where's the confetti? We should be celebrated. Not treated like criminals. Yeah. So what are they going to do about it? We're not going to take it. They're going to do nothing. (laughs) Because they are going to take it. They want something else that they must endure the tribulation if they're going to achieve. They do still want to be full sisters. They have to play by the rules and accept whatever punishments so that the others let them eventually still try to be Aes Sedai. Hopefully, they don't get stilled. You said accept any punishments. And Egwene is saying to Elaine, you know, yeah, not anything. Like you said, I will not be stilled. I will run away before that can happen. And in the end, Elaine agrees. Okay, we're, we're not losing our ability to touch the source. Mm-mm. Nope. Right. If, if it necessary, we will both bug so out of here. at this point, we've got two directions that this book can go. It can either go, the tower tries to still them, they try to run off, and we explore that adventure. Or the tower doesn't, they potentially stay, we explore that adventure. We'll find out. But it's not a choose-your-own-adventure book, so we continue on and see what happens. Indeed. Okay, their conversation is interrupted at this point. Fortunately, they were at a pause. They weren't actively talking. Egwene's door crashes open, and I just picture Fowlane, the accepted, jumping in like the Spanish Inquisition. No one expects the Spanish Ah! Inquisition. And is almost disappointed to not catch her talking. But she's guessing, and she even makes, "Uh uh-huh, whispering with your friend, huh? And Egwene almost speaks out to deny it and then, like, slaps a hand over her mouth, catches herself. Because you can't talk to anybody. Again, Fowlane's trying to bait her into getting in trouble. Yep, can't talk to anyone, including Fowlane. So, okay, the real reason Fowlane's here is the Amerlin has called for Finally, you. Let's go. Finally, let's go, let's go. Egwene, love it. She stands up, she straightens her skirts. It's not like she rushes now. She's like... Lead on. You know, kind of the attitude. I'm going to take my time. Go ahead. <laughs> just like... Mm, power move. Just wants to tick Fowl Lane off. power move. I don't blame her. Fowl Lane's a, a pig, you know, so that's all right. They get out into the hallway. There's Elaine with the the other one. You know, we've got this other accepted who's never named. The nameless one? Shall we call her the nameless one? Is that one never named? Really? Never named. Of all the times. Yes. Like, Robert Jordan names so many characters. Every character. But doesn't name that one? The story is that any character that is named, Robert Jordan had a full backstory of. So he didn't want to write a backstory for this one. This was a throwaway character, apparently. Red so, shirt. Gonna die. We've got... Calling it now. <laughs> right. Foul Lane and the Nameless One go ahead and escort them up towards the Amerlin's quarters. Along the way, they do meet up with Nynaeve, hey, Nynaeve. who's being led by her escort... Theodrin, still. Uh, so that one gets a name. Mm-hmm. We get a few key points that are pointed out here through this point then. Less than a quarter of the novice rooms are in use. So in the past, at some point, there were many more novices mm-hmm. in the tower, but there clearly aren't And we now. kind of already know this. It's been talked about a number of times that there are fewer and fewer novices accepted in Aes Sedai than apparently there once used to be. Right. They're also, as they're walking along, they see there aren't many accepted or Aes Sedai even in, in sight. There's just not that many people around in the tower. Totally. They also notice there's very few men. Now, that one doesn't seem so no, shocking that doesn't, to me. Like, it, notably, they're not seeing at least, like, warders just walking around, at least not in mass. Because that's one of the main places I would think you would see men walking around the tower. Mm -hmm. And they do see, I think it's just two men, as they do make their whole march up to the Amerlin's quarters, and they are warders. That's it. Mm -hmm. Just two warders. Arriving at the antechamber of the Amerlin seat study, they're handed off to the Keeper of the Chronicles, Liana Sadat. What up, Liana? She checks to ensure, okay, the girls cause no trouble, and Theodorin is like, just fine, and the unnamed one is also, yep, no problems. But Fowlane, she's like, nah, she just, she's got an attitude problem kind of thing. <laughs> Liana, I love it. She sees right through it. She sends Fowlane off for some, basically some punishment work to check her own attitude. Mm-hmm. Sweet. Fowlane, check yourself before you wreck yourself. That's, that's where we're at here. 
So the guards, basically, they're dismissed. And Liana takes the girls into the study, where they find the Amarlin sitting at a table, studying, very appropriate, studying some papers. And they quietly wait. Da, 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 yeah, it's da, that da. thing where it's like, you, you got called, you want to say something, but you're stuck not saying something until they bother to look up and give you the time of day. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a power thing. I'm going to make you wait because I can. This whole chapter is just full of power moves from people. It is. Finally, Swan Sanche, the Amerlin, looks up and says, So, our runaways return. And man, Nynaeve is done with this. <laughs> she just cannot take that they keep being accused of being runaways. So she immediately starts to refute this. And starts off with, no, 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 you got to understand, Leandrin, she misled us, and, and she's going into this story, and wham, the Amerlin slams her hand down on the table mm -hmm. and cuts her off. And we get, we get some information here, and this is important. We finally get some answers over why they're being treated Fantastic. This Hit me with it. What do we got? Well, first off, Leandrin and 12 other sisters total. are suspected... That's right. Suspected to be, are as good as known to be, Black Aja. <gasps> so the fact that Leandrin did something wrong, yeah, pfft, that's old news. And she's really all over them. I don't even want to hear that name anymore. Do not talk about Leandrin. How old of old news? Well, it turns out that I think it was about a month ago. Okay. Uh, Might have been some months ago, but a period of time definitely has passed that these 13 sisters ran off. After trying to steal some Angrial and Sa Angrial, they failed at that, but they did succeed in taking some Ter Angrial. Damn. Now, Zach, will you catch us up? Catch our listeners up on what these three different kinds of things are? Right. So we got power related objects, kind of. Angrial allows you to kind of channel more ish, more longer slash powerful. It's a little fuzzy and what exactly, but it's an aid to the power channeling. Saw Angriol, it's a super aid to the channeling. It's an Angriol, but better. Terra Angriol, it's an item made from the power, sometimes needing the power to use it, sometimes not needing the power to use it, but kind of your basic magic item is going to function and do something. So it uses the power to do what it does, but you may or may not yourself need to be a channeler to use Correct. it. Correct. Okay. So I like how you said it's a it's a magic item. So personally, in my opinion, Terangrial are the most generically useful, but that's mostly because they not only are useful to channelers, but also sometimes to others. Whereas the other two just as assist in being better or more powerful at channeling. So basically, these thirteen sisters, through their actions, have proven, have confessed that they're Black Aja. I mean, there's no other explanation why they would yeah, do this. Yeah, why else would you steal shit and run? Mm -hmm. Many of the Terangriol that they stole, no one actually knows how to use. They never figured out what they do. You know, we know it can be somewhat touchy trying to explore Terangriol when you don't know what they are. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Uh, we learn more about that later, but th they don't know what some of these things do. I like to think of it in the way of like if you're exploring various weapons and stuff, some of them you might realize, oh, that's sharp. I shouldn't cut myself. And some of them you don't realize until you've like taken a blowtorch to it that it contained gunpowder and would explode. So, you know, be careful. Don't take things apart. It might hurt. Now, why they would take Terangrial that no one knows how to use is kind of a mystery. Mm -hmm. But Swan says, you know, they're Black Aja. They may know things about those that the Aes Sedai as a whole didn't know. Now, robbery is not the only reason that it kind of like confirms, hey, these people are Black Aja. Oh, no, not at but all. But rather, during the theft that night, there were also deaths. Specifically, three sisters, full Aes Sedai, and two warders were killed. And then some others, you know, guards and servants and stuff. Yeah, seven guards, nine servants. There's quite a death toll left behind so that these women were able to get away scot-free. Because yeah. nobody saw them leave. Basically, these are the people that saw them leave. And they're all dead. Dead men tell so no tales. So then they got away, and no one else knew, noticed they were, you know, 
gone for some time until the murders were discovered. I guess sometimes dead men do tell tales because this seems to tell a pretty clear tale. Mm -hmm. Now, there has been some spin going on in the White Tower because this is very damaging to the reputation. Remember, Black Aja is something that they have denied exists. We don't talk about it. Well, they are continuing to deny Black Aja exists publicly. Swan shares, okay, some of the Aes Sedai know what's happened, but we've we've hid the truth from the servants, from just the regular people. They All they know is that, yes, some sisters have left the tower, and there were dark friends that got in. We're going to talk more about that a little so later. So, like, I get it, but that feels like really dirty pool. I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. I don't like when people in charge and, clearly are lying to cover their own asses. Ah, uh, but, they, but they didn't lie. No, but they do. They don't, but they do. So again, we'll talk about that. that we actually get to that to the next chapter. So let's, let's hang on to that. But we do get the final point of clarification here that the reason the girls are being accused, portrayed as runaways, is honestly partly for their protection. Because if it was known that they disappeared with Leandrin before, mm -hmm. that connection might condemn them. Yeah, People might, like, oh, you ran away with Leandrin too? Yeah, we'll still first and ask questions later. Better safe than sorry. Right, because people are scared. And they want this to go away. So they'd be happy to make these girls just go away. Mm -hmm. And so, yep, nope, we're covering this up. You just ran away. That's a really harsh euphemism for stilling them. Just make it go away. Make it go away. So what is going to happen now? Well, to solidify the story that they're having others believe, these three girls are going to be punished. Yes. Each of them will be switched soundly. They will not be able to sit. That's right. They shall be quite sore. And they've all been assigned to work the kitchens until further notice. And then as Further punishment, these particular punishments have been announced far and wide. Everyone in the tower knows that this is what's being done to them, which apparently is highly unusual. Punishment, any sort of penance, it's usually a private matter. Yeah, it's more about like, you know, actually being in an atoning with yourself and knowing that you were wrong and needing to pay penance for that. Not, you know, embarrassing, making a fool of them and an example of them. Swan asks, so, do you have any objections to the plan? Yes, but none of them say anything. That's right, they hold their tongues. And why? Well, again, because they gotta push on through, they want to be Aes Sedai. Swan shares, very smart of you, because if they'd taken issue, they still would have been punished. She just would have piled on more to get, to make a point. That just, like, <laughs> so... I've had teachers like that, and I don't like mm. it. Well, I don't think the girls like it either. It's not effective. It just makes you dig your heels in worse. But the Amerlin does, and I think this is part of her motivation too, she does actually believe deep down they deserve some of this punishment because they were so stupid. I mean, to you that know, extent, yes. How could you fall for this trap? How could you just blindly go off with Leandrin? That's what Swan's thinking. Now, what do you think about that, Zach? Is she being fair? I mean, on the one hand, yes, because I agree. On the other hand... <laughs> we were thinking it at the time. What are you doing? <laughs> on the other hand, she's preaching out one direction, trust Aes Sedai and do what we tell you. And then the other direction, use your brain and don't trust Aes Sedai and just blindly do what we tell you. So, like, do you want us to use our brains or not? Because the standard that novices and uh, accepted are held to is Aes Sedai are right, you must obey. And she's basically saying you're getting punished because you were stupid enough to obey, which we told you to do. So, like, that's not really fair. I think there's an intentional, built-in, double standard that they expect women to figure out at some point during the training. And that is, yes, you must obey without question. But you really should question. I mean, considering they also deny the existence and have a massive cover-up about Black Aja... I don't think that that's really meant to be figured out until, like, after you're actually accepted to full Aes Sedai. Maybe. It does feel like they're caught in a, a catch-22, and it's it's a nasty, 
as as Jordo says in Discord, a no win situation. They're just being punished yep, to be punished. There was no way they could have done the right thing. And put a pin in that. We'll come back to that comment. Okay. Swan shares then that uh, she would put the oath rod into their hands immediately if she could to ensure that they lived as Aes Sedai moving forward, bound to the three oaths. But that's not possible. What she can do, however, is immediately raise Egwene and Elaine to accept it. I mean, they got to go through a process, but she's going to make it happen right now. Okay. We're going to get you up to accept it. She's saying, basically, you're too powerful. You know too much now after your time out of the tower to remain novices. Notably, so we're going to see that you are this raised. This is ridiculous and ridiculously fast. Not by our standards of the reader and we want them to be done being novices, but by the standards of last time they were in the tower, we were hearing stories about novices who take three to six years to become accepted. They spent three to yeah. six months and most of that time out of the tower. Yeah, it's pretty shocking for anyone to, to be raised this fast. So she's already going against tradition, against form by making this happen, but she believes she can justify it based on what they learned outside the tower and the fact that they are all so incredibly strong in the power. And that's something all the Aes Sedai can sense. So, all right, I'm going to raise you to novices. Nynaeve's already uh, raised them to accept it, sorry. As long as they keep their heads about it, they're absolutely fine because in no world would any of the Aes Sedai actually be willing to let go these three. Right. Now, Egwene and Elaine, you can think for a moment, they're like, whoa, not novices anymore? Accepted? Yes! And she cuts that off right away, mm -hmm. Swan does. She says, don't even for a moment think of this as a reward or something, because you are going to be miserable. Your first days as accepted will make your worst day as a novice feel like Candyland. Wonderful times. And Nynaeve is sitting over there with a look on her face like, yeah, because Nynaeve did go through that. Yeah, they all treated me like shit, and they probably still will. And again, she looks at them, Egwene, Elaine, she says, So, any complaints? And they both like, no mother. Again, we're going with the flow here. Then we get a little more info yeah. from Swan. She notes that Elaine's mother, Queen Morgase, was none too pleased to discover Elaine was missing. You mean from the, the tower. queen's not happy that her daughter was missing? <sighs> Shocker. She was furious. And she demanded Elaine be returned to Camelin as soon as she was found. Swan managed to talk her down, but there were still ramifications. I mean, she said, we can't just give her back to you. She needs to get through this training so she'll be safe and, you know not die from the power, which can happen to someone untrained. But here's the deal moving forward then. She's like, fine, you can keep her as long as she needs the training, but then she's coming back here. She's not staying in the tower. Only so long as necessary. And, right, and then Morghese tries to take Galad and Gawain back to Camelin with her, her sons, where they're there for warder training. Somehow the boys talked mom out of it. Yeah, not entirely sure how that happened, but we're just going to go with it. Yeah, yeah. Swan's got no clue. The other thing, though, and this is a ramification that does take place, where all the others are maybe and, well, it didn't happen. Okay, this one did. Elida, Morghese's uh, Aes Sedai mm -hmm. advisor, has been banned. That's big. She is not allowed to re and return to Caitlyn. And it's not just... Elida's not allowed back. It's not like Elida was terrible. I don't want her back. No, it's Elida's not allowed back and no Aes Sedai either. I'm not having an advisor. For the first time in Andor's history, the ruler, the queen, has no Aes Sedai with her. Guiding That's her. a lot. Andor is not a young country, per se. It's not ridiculously old. Right. But it's not young. Oh, it, yeah. It's been around a while. Uh, here's... Here's my moment to point out, again, we are a spoiler light podcast, so we're not going to spoil the future for you, but we will point out significant things. This sucker is significant. There are ramifications down the road. Honestly, every part of that, every part of what we just were talking about is important. Yes, but I'm emphasizing that last one, that Queen Morghese no longer has an Aes Sedai advisor. There will be multiple ramifications from that. So here's where it happened. Boom. Okay, Elaine is not willing to give up her training and return to Camelin. 
She just heard, as soon as I'm safe enough to go, I have to go back. I don't want to go back. And Swan's like, well, that's good, girl, because I ain't letting you go back. I don't care what Morghese thinks. You are way too powerful. There's no way we are letting one of the strongest Aes Sedai in a thousand years not truly become an Aes Sedai. Okay, you, you are going all the way through. You are going to be part of this White Tower. At which point, Elaine realizes one of her arms is held by her mom, and one of her arms is held by Swan Sanche, and they're just yanking back and forth, and at some point, she might get ripped in half. You practically hear her gulp. Yeah. <laughs> No thanks. People shouldn't be the rope in tug of war. No, it never ends well for the rope. Although you know, every time I did a tug of war thing at school as a like a PE teacher, didn't end well for you either. No, the rope was always fine. Was my point. It was actually one team or the other ending mm. up in the mud. So I don't know. The rope does all right. I don't think we'll hope it works out for Elaine. I don't think many people end up winning. Like even when you win, you usually land on your ass. <laughs> Well, with all of this info out of the way, Swan instructs her keeper of the Chronicles, Liane, who's been there all along, to take Elaine down to Sherium's study. Dun, dun, dun! It's time for punishment to begin. Great. But why just Elaine? And she says, I'm going to keep these other two. I have a few more things to go over with them. You get the impression it's not Uh going to be good stuff. So off they go, and as the chapter ends, Egwene is sitting there thinking, so what now? What is it that Elaine doesn't need to hear, but we hear? Uh, Well, whatever. I don't care. Just again, so long as it doesn't stop me from learning and becoming Aes Sedai. And that's what she's fixated on. That's her focus. So we move on to the next chapter, chapter 14, The Bite of Thorns. As we do this... I need to ask a question partially just to you, my dad, and partially to anybody listening. Mm -hmm. This can be edited out of the actual full recording. I'm getting older. How does one trim nose hairs? Because it is just (laughs) tickling me constantly right now. I feel like I'm going to sneeze constantly. Okay, dude, this will probably be trimmed out of the episode. Yeah. Some people just yank them out. I've got beard trimmers, which I use on the nose hairs. It's the same kind of thing. You can get a little tool that's smaller that just trims the nose it's hair. It's so if you annoying. Want. But if you get the bigger one, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what you do. Get a little beard trimmer. Then if you decide to grow the hair at some point, you can keep it under control that way too. Anyway. If you'd asked that before your birthday, <laughs> you might have got that instead of bar glasses. No, I like the bar glasses better. And you did get some advice yes. in the Discord. I very much okay. appreciate it. Thank you. I will probably I will probably have to keep this in the episode, <laughs> just so you know. You can put it at, like, at the beginning or the end or something <laughs> if you feel like. <laughs> All right. Chapter 14, The Bite of Thorns. It picks up immediately where we left off. So Liana and... I have trouble with Liana. I, I used to say Leanne. I always read it as Leanne. I know it's not. And I, I, I said Leanne. Now I say Liana. I'm doing it because I know it's going to be Liana in the show, probably. No, it's not. They're saying it's going to be Liana. I don't really care what it is Leonic. until I hear it I'm Like, often. I can't, I can't say Liana. I'm, I'm still reading what? Leanne. I just can't say it that way because I will get yelled <laughs> at. I don't know from who, but someone. You had a classmate with the same no. exact spelling. No. Wasn't Leanne? Nope. Wasn't it? Yep. Or was it two N's instead? There were two N's in there. Uh, okay. Anyways... With Elaine and and Liana gone, Swan now gives more illumination on things. She says, okay, here's more you need to know. The servants don't know that Leandrin and the company stole those Terangrial. They don't know that at all. Okay. They also don't know there's any connection between the deaths and those 13 sisters. Oh, so that story about, like, dark friends being in and the dark friends killed people. I mean, that's true. But they just didn't, like, specify that dark friends that were also full eyes to die. That's right. Black Aja are dark friends. So they could say that without telling a lie. Like, that's true, but that's also kind of, like... <sighs> the truth that you hear is not always the truth that you think you hear. That's what we've learned all along. Even as someone who is decently good at doing that, it's dirty and I don't like it. Just the idea of dark friends 
invading the tower and and murdering people that is a horrific damage to the the reputation of the white tower how could that possibly happen oh yeah the guards look stupid to actually confirm that black aja did it that that would be horrific at the same time if black aja did it the guards wouldn't look yeah. stupid so the guards would be fine but also like everyone might turn on Aes Sedai and no one ever trusts them then again Outside of Tar Valen, no one really trusts them anyway, so... The Aes Sedai are willing to throw shade on people they think are less important in order to protect their own reputation because they genuinely believe their reputation is important for the safety of the entire world. Are they right? That's a judgment call. Oh, so like a politician, but also maybe a little bit more honest about it? Maybe? All right, so we get back to President Swan- Sanjay now as she uh, <laughs> she shares what she has in mind for Egwene and for Nynaeve, something they are not going to enjoy one bit. Ooh, okay. Give us and, more punishment. And then even as she's about to, she hesitates again and she looks uncomfortable. And this makes Egwene, we got her POV in this chapter again. This, this freaks her out. Here we got the... Amerlin seat, the undeniably most powerful woman in the world, and she looks uncertain and uncomfortable. What could make her feel this way? She's very troubled. But, okay, she spits it out. Here's the deal. With Leandrin and the other 12 sisters basically being revealed as Black Aja, the question comes, who else might be Black? Was that all? Was Did it they... just 13? Or are That's there right. a lot more? That's right. And she figures there's probably more. I mean, it would be too excellent an opportunity to leave some sisters who aren't implicated in the tower Mm -hmm. why give up your because they didn't they didn't have to all give up their blackness no not the one who was at risk was leandrin because okay the girls are coming back the word's gonna get out so it makes sense that she took off the other 12 they could have been fine and then for whatever reason she took the 12 but there's no reason why there couldn't be more. So presumably the best reason to take only 12 is because then they think that all of them left. But there's still at least one. Right. So the Amerlin is left uncertain. Who can I trust? Can I trust Liana, the keeper? Can I trust Sherium, the mistress of novices? I. She feels like she should be able to trust them, but how can she be sure? Yeah. She'd like to trust lots of people, but there's only a few people who she knows for sure she can actually trust. But does she? Well, She's like, Varen, Varen, I, I should be able to 100% trust her. She already knows pretty much everything I know. Moraine. I've been like hand in hand with Moraine for as long as I've been an Aes Sedai. I, I should be able to trust her, but can I? Well, that's where I say <laughs> there's only a few None of them are Aes Sedai. None of the few that she knows she's pretty sure she can trust are Aes Sedai. Because they're in the room with her. That's it. The only ones she feels she can be 100% positive are not Black Aja are the ones Leandrin tried to get rid of. So, you girls, Nynaeve, Egwene, I know you're not black. Now, quick, At least I'm pretty sure. Yeah, quick pause. She says that. At least I'm pretty sure. Quick pause on that. She clearly doesn't know enough about Dark Friends. I I feel like Dark Friends, for the most part, wouldn't necessarily have a problem scheming and trying to kill other Dark Friends. Just because a Dark Friend tried to kill you doesn't mean you're not all... It also discounts that Dark Friends might play a deep game. Nah, they're dumb. Maybe they were able to come back to be moles. You know, who knows? They got flipped. But They were good, and now they're bad. (laughs) <laughs> Swan is willing to take a risk. Take the chance that I think she tried to get rid of you because in some way you were a danger, a threat to her. Uh, I mean, again, they're very powerful and she just wanted them off the board. Therefore, she's going to assume they are not Black Aja, so I can trust you. Now, partly, Egwene is offended. So is Nynaeve. You even, for a moment, thought we might be Black Aja? <laughs> How dare you? We would what? She's like, but back off. I'm I'm saying you're not. I'm saying you're okay. not, and let's be real. If you really are offended, that's offensive because any person who's not an idiot would need to suspect literally everyone. 
Now, since I feel you are the ones, I can be 100% sure I'm going to make you have a new job. You are going to hunt out Black Aja for me. You will be my hounds. I mean, say what? Yeah, yeah. Because nobody will expect you are actually working for me, trying to secretly hunt out Black Aja when I've publicly punished you and have you in the kitchens cleaning pots every day. It's perfect. Now, I sit here and go, say what? As would pretty much everyone. Many even Egwene aren't the people who go say what. They're not, like, trying to argue, no, don't give us this job. They just feel good about it. They're like, yeah, let's do it. Basically. Egwene more than Nynaeve. Yeah. Egwene's like, yeah, yeah, all right. But Nynaeve has some hesitations. Not that she doesn't see merit and importance in the job. You know, she wants to do it. She thinks it's important to do, but she has concerns. Yes. And they're, they're viable concerns. She's like, um, okay, we're just accepted, and we're supposed to go up potentially against full Aes Sedai. And Nynaeve's like, and I can't even channel unless I'm angry. <laughs> what chance will we have against full sisters who are Black Aja? Nynaeve, trust me, if you're running into a full sister that's Black Aja, you're probably gonna be pissed. <laughs> and Swan says, also, okay, you're still accepted, but in sheer power... Both of you could whoop Leandrin's butt and the other 12. So the ones we know are Black Aja, none of them are going to hold a candle I mean, to you. Maybe not all at once, but like individually? Yeah. And you're more powerful than nearly every sister who's around these days. So you can hold your own if it comes to that. Uh, and she says, I'm not saying it's not challenging. Yes, you're going to have to work within the restrictions of being accepted. That's going to make it difficult. But... Your situation will also make you less suspected. So you will be able to look around, to ask questions politely, respectfully, but you'll have ways to look into things that a full sister wouldn't and just wouldn't be able to pull it off. Bright side, with some of these rules, I mean, they're allowed to channel without direct supervision nowadays. That's one reason they got to be accepted, not novices. That's right. It wasn't just they were too powerful to be novices. She needed them to have the freedom right. of being accepted. So you raised them to use them. Why am I not surprised? And Flamingo Sedai also points out in the Discord that they haven't taken the three oaths yet. Mm -hmm. So that's an advantage. Now, Swan actually expects them to live as if, you know, that they have taken the oaths. Yes. But... I think it's like a wink, wink, nod, nod, that if necessary, you can lie through your teeth. I think Swan has like an, a little bit of an understanding of what happened, especially as she asked for the rundown from Varen. Mm -hmm. So she has this understanding of when push came to shove, I mean, they tried, but also like exploding Earth to defend themselves. Like that's maybe a, a useful thing to have. I'm okay with it. And an Aes Sedai wouldn't be able to do it. But, Nynaeve, if you happen to get Leandrin alone in a room, you go, girl. <laughs> I mean, if you want to just say, like, oh, I have a couple friends there, it's okay. I cast Fireball. How big's the room? I don't care. I cast Fireball. <laughs> Egwene finally speaks out and says, okay, this is all well and good, but how are we possibly supposed to squeeze in time to seek out the Black Aja when our time's going to be sucked up with studies and lessons as accepted and then working in the kitchens all of our free time? How does that work? And the Amerlin says, you're just going to have to work it out, girl. Figure it out. As accepted, she points out, you will have more control over what you study, how much time you put into it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like novices where they have set novice classes. No, you can be a slacker. You can, because... You're not going to move from accepted to Aes Sedai until you prove you're ready. So if they take their time studying and they lollygag, it's on them. That's fine. Nobody's going to really get an issue with it unless it goes on for a few years. Mm -hmm. So they can pull this off for a while. They can be a little free with their time. Similarly, they're trusted to not like kill themselves with the power at this point. So it's more, what do you feel you want to specialize in and figure out? You could abandon most channeling and just stick to healing. If you really want that, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Then we get to another point. Egwene's like, what about Elaine, though? Why not have her help? 
And Swan agrees. She's saying, yeah, I don't think Elaine's a dark friend either. It would be nice to have her involved. But we got this issue between the Tower and Andor right now. Morghese is pretty ticked off. I need to have Elaine just get back on track with novice training for now. We gotta smooth this out. <laughs> Once everything is kind of back on an even keel then, yeah, maybe we can pull Elaine into this as well. But for now, she needs to stay out of this. Nynaeve speaks up with yet another challenge. I feel like this whole conversation is, okay, but... And then, sure, yeah, but, 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 you know, there's constant but this, but this, Here's but this. Here's the thing. They're having this great practice at improv. They're saying yes, and, yes, and <laughs> this other thing, um, question. So, I mean, they're just expressing their qu questions, comments, and concerns, and that's valid. We get to learn a lot about the job. So he here's Nynaeve's next challenge, then. I'm willing to be your hound. I will do this for you, but Egwene's too young. She's barely a woman. Egwene is sitting there going, Girl, Aka, what the? Excuse me? <laughs> Swan dismisses that. Just says, uh, doesn't even address the age of Egwene or the inexperience. She's just, no, I have you too. I'm mm -hmm. using you too. If I had a hundred like you, that still wouldn't be enough. So no, I am definitely using you both. To be honest, neither of them are old enough. They're both too young and inexperienced, but they're all she's got. When crap is all you got, crap is great. Or at least you still got to use I it. I haven't heard that phrase before. I just made that up. I don't think I've ever heard it. Uh, I'm sure there's something along those lines, but it just seems a little crass to be a real... I'm not sure crap is ever great. <laughs> That's the thing. I don't think it's great. I think it's just like, when crap is all you got, you don't bother wiping or something. I don't know. Honestly, when crap is all you got, you got crap. <laughs> no, when crap is all you got, you bluff. That's what I learned when you taught me poker. Oh, oh, the, no, I taught you that. Dang it. That's why you win. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the matter finally seems settled. Swan makes an additional concession. She says, okay, I've got to trust someone else. So Varen, we will trust Varen. She shares Varen already knows everything they've talked about, so we might as well bring her into this, and I'm going to let her bring you up to speed on everything else we know about Leandrin and the other 12, and she'll give you a complete list of all the Terra Angriel that was stolen, well, at least the ones we know for sure that they stole. So Leandrin will be part of this inner circle. And then she says, as for starting the hunt... Just be on the watch for what doesn't seem right. So she doesn't want them, you know, dun, 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 dun. She doesn't want a mission impossibling anywhere. No. Just kind of go about your business and keep your eyes open. Look for what seems hinky. And she says, I will check in I'm with sorry, you. Look for what seems what? Hinky. Hinky? Are you not familiar with the term hinky? I'm aware. H -I -N -K -Y? I've just never heard someone actually use it. <laughs> I, well, now you have Hinky. <laughs> and she says, don't come to me to report. I will come to you because I can use the cover of I'm checking to see you are suffering and your punishments and that you are learning your lesson. And when I stop by, you can then kind of tell me anything you've noticed. Okay, that's a cover story. That'll work. Don't know if it's a good cover story, but it'll work really important is that we're not attracting Black Aja attention. Because if they figure out you're looking for them, yeah, they're going to kill you. It's clearly they don't have a problem killing. That's right. Finally. Okay, we have this all settled. Uh, yeah, Nynaeve's got one more thing. She brings up the elephant in the middle of the room. What elephant? As still only accepted. Oh, wait, what's the term for an elephant in this world? Oh. It's a different word. Oh. Um... Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Hey, spoiler light. We can't talk about that yet. Why not? It's that... knowing the term is fine. <laughs> Sorry, you've already spoiled. They don't even know. They're gonna. See they don't an know there's elephants in this world. It's gonna be talked I about. I blew it. I blew it already. <laughs> oh, close, Jordo. He he put, but it was close enough for me to get it. Oh, Flamingo said I did it with the spoilers bar. Nailed it. Okay, I can cut this all out if I want to. You should, but probably. we won't have to. No, because we won't say where it comes from. There you go. You'll just we put like random beeps in every time we say <laughs> elephant or <laughs> and it'll be really funny. I just should have called him an olifant. 
pull it out of a different world. I watched that last night. Did you? First one. Nice. So finally, Nynaeve brings up the Oliphant in the middle of the room. They're only accepted, so any Aes Sedai can order them around. That sucks. Again, that's par- that's partly how Leandrin took advantage of them. They were supposed to follow orders. So any black sister who comes to suspect them could order them to come with her, could take them down deep into the bowels of Tarvalin, hey, come check this and could cool lock thing. them away. Yeah, come check out this cool thing in the library. Yeah, it's a great book called... Um, I know you're looking for me, and now you die. <laughs> That's right. And they'd have no way to, to disobey, no way to not comply because of the rules of the tower. So how do they overcome that? And Swan's got an answer. And here we get to see something from that special box we learned about in the last episode. The little, little wooden one that has incendiary stuff. So she's got those special documents and she goes ahead and opens it up, takes out two documents, and gives them to the girls. <gasps> and Nynaeve opens one of them, and whoa, holy cow. Dang! It's it's basically a blank check. But not necessarily for money. No, but it could be. Could be. It could be for any freaking thing. I'm going to read it verbatim. It says, what the bearer does is done at my order and by my authority. Obey and keep silent at my command. And then that has the official seal and signature of mm-hmm. Swan Sanche, Watcher the Seals, Amerlin Seed, all that fancy stuff. It's less a actual blank check and more the figurative expression of carte blanche. And I mean, the power there, not only do what I, do what they tell you to under my authority. But say nothing. But tell no one. Ooh. These documents kind of wow the girls. Nine even even says, I could make a warder dance. And she's like, um, yeah, you could until I uh, heard about it. <laughs> yeah. Use with caution and only as a last resort. That's what they're told. Especially as you need to remember, dark friends, black Aja, they won't give a shit. Yeah, they'll just laugh at it and stick a dagger in you. <laughs> or worse. So it's not absolute protection. The chapter draws to a close <gasps> with, okay, what about Matt? It's like they've had all this time with Amerlin, and now they think, let's ask about Matt. And she's like, uh, you will, we will send word. Yeah, but, but, but. And this time, but doesn't work. She's like, enough. Go. And out they go. Now, I'd like to point out here, we will send word does not mean we will send word when he is well or we are working nope. on it and he'll be fine. Nothing. No. It means I may not have decided whether he lives or dies yet, but you'll be told eventually something. Yeah. Jordo points out in Discord, yeah, word of his death. I mean, <laughs> it could be anything. It's very cryptic and unfortunate. And we just had a master class on how I Sedai only say what they want and infer lots of other things. <sighs> All right. Let's move to the next chapter. Last chapter for today, 15, called The Gray Man. It continues right where we left off. The girls are outside the study now, and hey, there's no one else here. Freedom! Okay, they're on their own. But not really. I mean, they got told to go report for, like, pots and stuff. Uh, not yet. Not yet. Just that they needed, they had appointments yeah. with Sherium. And with the pots, but they've got things not to like, do. But it's not like go right go there immediately. It's just like yeah, you've got things to do. So what they basically are going to start to do is just head back to their quarters. So they're walking away from the Amerlin section of the tower. They're heading back actually to the novice quarters. Nynaeve is walking with Egwene over to Egwene's area, and as they do, they talk. Nynaeve seems to be processing things a little more quickly than, than Egwene, probably because honestly she's a little older. A little less naive. Okay. Fair enough. Egwene is just, you know, she's ready. Uh, let's do this. And Nynaeve's like, um, okay, there are some issues with uh, hunting down the Black Aja that we really should be a little more cognizant of than you seem to be noticing. Yeah. I mean, like, Leandrin saw them clearly as some kind of threat. She tried to take them out. At the very least, took them out of the tower. Mm-hmm. So reason would have it. Any other black sister in the tower also has eyes on them. 
they are going to suspect them of something. That's right. I mean, it's a huge assumption to think that Leandrin was the only one who had it out for them. And just the thought that, oh, we're punishing them, punishing them so we can sweep that under the rug assumes that everyone, everyone buys the lie hook, line, and sinker. And again, a secondary assumption, if Leandrin and the 12 that left with her were the only Black Aja, maybe they're safe. But Swan doesn't think that's the only one. So yeah, there's every reason to believe there will be others with their eyes on them and perhaps out for them. Chances are they were screwed coming back to the tower in consideration of Black Aja, period. But now that they're actively going to be looking at them, the target just got bigger. Yeah. So Nynaeve is making the point, our lives could be very much in danger. We need to be aware, watchful, on guard all the time. I'm in danger. Egwene is troubled as she, okay, I get that. We have to be ready. Well, I'm ready. I'll blow their heads up. Okay, she didn't say that. I'm paraphrasing thoughts from her mind that didn't come out of the dark spots. It's it's the gist. But you know she could do it. She could. Well, she could try. And therefore... She's troubled that Nynaeve won't. Nynaeve says, I'm committing to live by the three oaths, which means she will not do harm to a person unless she's 100% sure they're a dark friend, or she's sure her own life is in imminent danger. Now, granted, that doesn't mean hmm. she won't do harm. It just means she won't use the power. There's no oath about not stabbing him with a knife. Um, yeah, I think that's, like, understood. <laughs> it's, like, a- against the intent, but not against the word. There's wording. Aes Sedai assassins who are all skilled with daggers. <laughs> and let's be real. No. I'm sorry. Aes Sedai and the truth you hear not being the truth that is. I'm pretty <laughs> sure we've covered this. Is there a secret Aja? The uh, the monk level. I'm down for it. <laughs> they go out and kill people with their hands. I'd super be down uh. for the assassination, Aja. <laughs> well, Egwene is saying, okay, fine. You're going to live like that. I would rather... I'm going to do what I got to do. I'm not going to be stilled. I'm not going to be killed. I'm going to do what I have to do. And Nynaeve's like, girl, come on, think about it. We can live by the three oaths and still be fine. There are lots of ways we can still protect ourselves. If that wasn't true, I said I would be killed every time they left the tower. You know, they don't all have warders watching their back, and yet they go out and they come back, and they're fine. In fact, we just have to learn the nuances. The Red Aja is some of the ones that go out and come back the most in dangerous situations, and none of them have warders. Very true. Now, Egwene senses in this, though, that Nynaeve... She's determined she's going to live as an Aes Sedai and partly to make sure there's no risk that she's going to be put out of the tower. She is driven to be an Aes Sedai. Now, we already know Egwene wants to be an Aes Sedai. She's just passionate for learning. She wants everything she can get. But Nynaeve is different. She has some other reason that she definitely wants to be an Aes Sedai and she's not saying it. Egwene does not know what's going on here. We Egwene do. Not? And we do. No, we know Egwene something. has Egwene not doesn't? figured it out. Hold on. Yep. Are you telling me that everyone knows things about, like, Lan and Nynaeve and that Moraine is, like... This doesn't have to do with Lan and, and, and Nynaeve. Okay, what are you getting at? This has to do with Moraine. Just that she's, like, very spiteful, want, needs to do, be better, all that stuff? Nynaeve has never shared, opened her heart up to Egwene about this. Nynaeve's never been subtle. How does Egwene not know that? That's not subtle, though. That's like, you look at them and you're like, yeah, she wants to be better, do better, and like show that person up, if not kill them. It's like super obvious. If the boys can figure it out, Egwene can figure it out. And the book implies very clearly here, Egwene hasn't figured it out. And I'm going to say the reason is Egwene is too tunnel vision. She's focused on what she wants. And so she hasn't paid enough attention to what's going on in Nynaeve's mind. And right now she's catching on. There's some passion behind why she wants to be an Aes Sedai. And I don't know what that is. This is going to be a weird moment because most people would disagree with me. And I even disagree with me in a lot of contexts. (laughs) Um, But in this specific moment... Egwene is extremely narrow-minded. 
she's usually very open, looking at different opportunities. But this is, no, she wow. looked at Moraine and went, that's what I want to be. And then eventually moved on and went, saw Swan and went, ooh, powerful woman in power. That's what I want to be. But, like, doesn't see any other possibility or that, you know, these people might be hated. She never tends to notice the negative. She's definitely yeah. a J when it comes to Myers-Briggs, not a P. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, conversation all took place while they were getting back to the novice quarters. Ta-da! They're in the novice quarters now. And they're actually at Elaine's room. That's the first room they would get to. Egwene's is next. And Nynaeve knocks on Elaine's room. And no answer. Opens the door, pokes her head in, makes sure she's not like asleep or something. Nope, she's not there yet. So clearly she's still getting a whooping. Darn. Oh, that's going to be some sore buttage. Probably. Wow. You think she'll be butt hurt? Oh, no. No, 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 no. Uh, I know I'm not the dad here, but I, I can make dad jokes. Come on. <laughs> okay. She proceeds to head to Egwene's room then, but Egwene grabs her by the shoulder, holds her back, and says, Hey, doesn't get a chance to say what she was going to say, but basically she wanted to know, Why'd you want to definitely talk to Elaine? Because we can't talk to Elaine yet. So what? But the very fact that she stopped and pulled back on Nynaeve for a moment causes something fortuitous to happen because a crossbow bolt flashes by, nicks her ear, and she's fine. I mean, well, she got nicked, but she's not dead. Yes. Had she kept walking, that sucker would have gone right through her heart. So we're just going to sit here and go, A, went through ear instead of heart. That uh, height doesn't quite work out, but we're going to let let it be. B, I know we haven't said that they're Taviran, but we can, can we say that we're they're basically Taviran? Like, feels like it. It's rumors. Rumors. But I'm going to go with they're lucky. That's the same thing. And and the wheel, the wheel has plans for them. That That's the same thing. <laughs> Anyways, Nynaeve sees what just happened, and she tackles Egwene, because where one bolt came, another might. And then she looks up, she sees the attacker now running away, and she's ticked. As you said, if Nynaeve gets attacked or something, she's gonna be mad. Told ya. So she goes ahead and uses the power easily and captures the assailant in a band of solid air, trapping him in place. Hmm. Wonder where, where she, did learned she learned that, that trick. Almost yeah, like where did she learn that? She Zach? got upset and uh, was confined with bands of air on a ship. Thanks, Swan. Yeah, she even quotes what Swan told her at that point here in the book. Ah, <sighs> so they've taken care of that. They collect themselves. They get up, dust themselves off. They walk over to the where the man is trapped, only to find him dead, with a dagger sticking out of his chest. Sorry, what? And the crossbow. The crossbow he must have used, it's gone. So he's dead. Someone else was here, took crossbow with them. It's the only explanation. But before they can explore, figure anything else out about that, Sherium Sedai comes down the hall. And it says literally down from above. So like there's ramps. So she's coming down a ramp. There's multiple ways in and out of this hallway. Yep. And ta-da. She's like, uh, what the... And they're like, uh, we found him. Now, I do want, need to specify, has she released him from the bands of air at this point? She has not. So there's dead man with a dagger in his heart just there. Like this. And Sherium is like, uh. Nynaeve's like, uh. <laughs> we found him like this. That is not a lie. They did find him like this. No, but also like... It's not the full story. <laughs> and Nynaeve also <laughs> isn't bound to the truth. So Shiriam has no reason to really believe that she's telling the truth. Yeah. Shiriam notes that, ooh, finding a dead man in the novice quarters, that's bad. <laughs> okay, understatement. <laughs> but this is far worse. <sighs> He's a gray man. What's a gray man at? It feels, I need an explanation because this feels like it's going in a dark direction and I'm not okay with it. <laughs> we learn that in Wheel of Time, a gray man is an assassin of the Dark One. Someone who has given up his soul and therefore isn't truly alive anymore. Being soulless, they are nearly impossible to notice. That's the side effect of this. 
So they could they could walk through a crowded room and no one's going to be able to really notice them. That you might see them, but the memory of it immediately slips your mind. Nothing stands out, nothing catches your attention, and they could literally walk up to you and stab you, and you wouldn't really notice anything about them until the knife they was already stuck a the dagger heart. through your heart. Yeah. Interestingly enough, and tiny spoiler warning, so you can probably cut me off on this if I go too far. It reminds me, not in mechanics, but in like crap, uh, in theme, thematically. It reminds you of crap. It oh, okay. reminds me thematically of Drabs and Warbreaker, actually. And it's, I had that connection more recently. Mechanically, very different. But this whole idea of a gray man and uh, that's like that connected. And I was like, I like that. Okay. Yeah, I don't have to cut that off. That's fine. If you haven't read Warbreaker, you probably should. But if people have no idea what we're talking about, that's fine. Yeah. Anyway. We uh, get back to Sherium. She states that no gray man has dared to enter Tarvalon since the Trolloc Wars. So we're talking about 2,000 years. But that does mean that gray men have been in Tarvalon yes, before. Yes, yes, exactly. Because Tarvalon's been here for not quite 3,000 years. It's been here more like 2,850. Something like that. So they ask Sherium, uh, what are you going to do about this gray man? And she says, well, it will be up to the Amarlin seat. But I expect she'll keep it quiet. No more rumors are needed. I mean, we already have all the rumors that are current. And so she orders them, speak to no one about this except me and the Amerlin if she mentions it first. How come nobody in this tower wants to talk to anyone about anything? When I first read that, I went, huh, that's kind of odd. See, I didn't think it was that sus just because literally no one is communicating about anything anything in this tower i expect every word out of everyone's mouth to be part of a lie and a cover-up at this point (laughs) sherium then orders them move along move along with the trouble they're already in the last thing they need is to be associated with an incident like this yeah that's fair as Egwene starts to move Nynaeve holds her back and says uh sherium what were you doing coming up here to the novice quarters now that's actually a fair question i said i rarely come to the novice quarters Sherium looks startled, and then she chastises Nynaeve. Are you questioning a full Aes Sedai? I mean, yes, but you're also dodging the question. Perhaps you need greater punishment. And yeah, she's totally dodging the question. It's more, it's not even dodging, it's threatening if you care to push further on this question. Mm -hmm. Egwene has a sudden thought, then begs forgiveness. She needs to run back to her room before she leaves. She's cold, she wants her cloak. And she runs back there. But her real thought is not about her cloak. No. She just thought, oh, we just kind of, you know, implied we just found this guy here. But he shot at us. And that bolt, that crossbow bolt is right outside my door. I need to go get it. She goes to get it and it's gone. That's okay. The crossbow was gone too. But it wasn't gone before when they were right there. So holy crap. She figures that means there's another gray man. Someone else walked right past us, and we didn't even notice him. And he took the bolt, and he left. She's terrified. She returns to Nynaeve and Sherium, and she finds, okay, they didn't just sit there quietly and patiently while I was gone, because Sherium is fuming, and her toe is tapping, and she's clearly irritated, and Nynaeve is just standing there staring at Sherium. And, okay, Egwene begs forgiveness for the delay and drags Nynaeve away. And what do we learn? Well, Nynaeve had continued to press for an answer. Why were you here? And why does she press? She's doing her job already, as she sees it. Yeah, it's like, Nynaeve has no right to do this, but also, like, this is exactly what she needs to be doing. That's right. This is a suspect thing. We were just shot at by a gray man, and Sherium just happens to walk along in a place where I said I never come? Especially when we know these halls are more abandoned than normal. And I'm going to do it again. This is hinky. Nope, I'm sticking with sus. This is it totally feels better. Hinky is my generation. Sus can be yours. I don't there think you Hinky's go. even your generation. I think it's like <laughs> your parents. Oh, <laughs> I don't think it existed for my parents. I'm gonna look it up before we record again. I don't think Hinky's been honestly said in like 50 years, and you're not <laughs> old enough to really have said that. I use Hinky. Let it go. Clearly you don't usually because it's the first times I've heard you say it. 
<laughs> Anyways, she was pressing Sherium because she's seeking information. Maybe Sherium's Black Aja. Maybe. She's not saying she is, but this is the kind of thing they're supposed to follow up. Egwene is like, girl, you gotta be more careful. That was way too blunt, way too obvious. That's how you're gonna get killed, okay? Subtle. Be a subtle sister. Ask seemingly simple questions. Yeah, I don't think don't go any all of off that like this. Is going to be uh, followed through on. Uh, <sighs> just doesn't feel like their style. So speaking of taking chances, Egwene then shares her subterfuge that she'd gone back to get the crossbow bolt, but it was gone. And Nynaeve's like, oh, "Great, you took that kind of risk, girl." But it was gone. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> And as the chapter ends, Egwene, she just wants to wants to block this from her mind now that she was almost killed. Nynaeve, though, she has a different thought on it. What's her thought? It's more, uh, you need to keep this in your mind with clarity. Specifically, the Black Aja, or at least agents of the Dark One, just tried to have them killed immediately. You get that out of your mind for even a moment, that crossbow bolt was not missing. You're dead. Yeah, yeah. And then Nynaeve leaves us with something to ponder. She points out, Sherium never mentioned anything about the dead man having been stabbed. Isn't that odd? End of chapter. And end of the episode. Eh. It is odd. It is odd. Eh. That she never said anything. But we'll leave it. All right, before we move into the spoiler room, yes. we'll wrap up our regular content now. Thank you for being with us. If you're enjoying... The content we're providing. Again, as always, we ask you to share the news. Yes. Give us a rating, a review. Wherever you listen to podcasts. All of the above. Hopefully five stars if you've truly been enjoying it. But whether you have or haven't, mm -hmm. please tell us and others what you think. Feel free to communicate with us what you're thinking as well. We've got lots of ways you can get in touch with us and we'll interact with you. We love interacting with fans. Absolutely. You can write us at fantasyfortheages at gmail.com. You can join our Discord server. We've got lots of conversations happening every day there. Mm -hmm. So the link to that is in our show notes. What other uh, social medias do we use, Zach? You can find us on Twitter, where we're most active. Instagram, where we post our booze and occasionally other things, including soon to becoming a full scratch-off map of where we have listeners. Whoop, whoop. And occasionally, we will visit Facebook and see if any of you have joined us there. That's right. A couple of the ways you can interact with us is, of course, get your own Fantasy for the Ages coffee mug or beer stein. You know, we've got the frosty mugs there. Uh, that's kind of a, just a fun thing to do. And if you get one of those, and I know I checked, people have bought some <gasps> already. So if you've got one, flex that mug, take a picture, send it our way, and we'll make sure it's shared wide and far or far and wide. All of the it's above. It's usually far and wide, but hey, you know, absolutely. Up, down, in, out, and around. And as I mentioned at the beginning, we do have a Patreon page. We don't do this for the money. We have real jobs. Zach just recently. I do have a real job but we now. We do have real jobs. We do this for fun. But the fact that some people do support us on Patreon, that is super appreciated. It helps offset the costs Absolutely. of this rather expensive hobby. But more so, it just is a little affirmation saying, you like us, you really like us, and thank you. All right. I think that's it for our regular stuff. Yes, yes Zach? So if you're a first-time listener, we love you. Get out. <laughs> Leave now. All right. I think it's time for us to move to... The Spoiler Room. You Fine. have a huge one. Yeah, I'm you using a, a, a big boy D20. D20. It's whirling iridescent blue-purple with sparkliness and white letters. Uh, I might... See, this is where you've got 30 different type and you can pick. Uh, I still just have my one nice high-level metal one. D20s, because I've got these... Big ones, I've got closer to like 35. Hmm. I've got a lot. I'm going to get more. I just like dice. <laughs> I'm a dice <laughs> goblin. What are you going to do about it? Anyway. All right. Let's roll to see who's going to go first. Ooh. Not terrible. I feel like you did better. I don't know. What'd you get? I got double digits. Me too. I got an 11. No, I got a 12. Well, you win. <laughs> Neither of our rolls were great, but you won again. I thought you might beat me that time. 
I'm only a preteen, but I got Remember, it. Remember, right. I'm a DM. I have terrible luck when it comes to rolling. <laughs> All right. What are you spoiling? Full spoilage. I am totally running with Sherium. Go for it. I thought you were a little on the nose even during the episode. Just for those who know, if you know, you know, Sherium is Black Aja. And these were the first very apparent hits. First time reading, you even can sense, okay, something's not quite right here. Clearly, Nynaeve suspects something's off. But there's plenty of other things that happen through the series that can give you the impression that there's nothing wrong with Sherium. And then you go back and you read New Spring, and if you read it earlier rather than publication time, Sherium's awesome. She's just a wonderful young lady. She's fine Aes Sedai. And she did. She started out that way. But... But the girl went bad. And so at this point, she is totally Black Aja. And the fact that she showed up just after this happened, yeah, that's not random. She was involved and engaged. She knew. So here she is, the mistress of novices. She's the one going to be involved with punishing. She knows a little more than the average person. No wonder she hits so hard. And she's working. She's working for the other team. Hmm. Yeah. So that's my full spoil. I love how that comes out in the end. And I'm not there yet. In my current listen, I'm in Knife of Dreams. And I'm... You're holding up nine. No, I'm holding up missing a pinky. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. I'm in Knife of Dreams yet, so it hasn't quite got to where things work out with Sherium yet. But we're getting there. We're close. And I am falling way behind on listening to other podcasts. Just because you're... Because really all I can listen to is Wheel of Time now. That's I'm fair. like so friggin' close to the conclusion. Yeah. Anyways... What do you want to spoil, Zach? My spoiler is in the same vein. I feel like it kind of has to be just because we've been so tower-centric, especially I said I am Black Aja. So I'm going to go with, we know Leandrin, these 12 I said I, with her, 13 of them left, all that. Are there more in the tower? Yes. This was the other thing I had written down if you had gotten first. Literally (laughs) a third of the tower is black. Now, they don't yeah. all know each other are black. They have a weird double-blind system. But it is 33.3% or a little bit more that are black Aja. It's crazy. Yeah. It's riddled. Ugh. It is a an infestation. You could, at random, pick an eye to and just go, You're evil. And you have a better chance of being right about it than you should. It should be like, you have to root out and find a couple. Nah, one in three chance you'll pick Now, interestingly, correctly. we have met very few at this point. We've met very few that are red. I said that die. are black. Oh, very few reds that are black? No, no, no. I, I said that misspoke the first time. We have met very few black Aja at this point. That is incorrect. About 50% really? of the Aes Sedai that we have met are black. We've got Sherium. Okay, let's just spoil. Let's go. We got Sherium. We got Leandrin. We've got Varen. Oh, yeah. We spoiled that previously. That's right. Varen. Now, other Aes Sedai we've really met, for the most part, includes Swan, Moraine, and... Um, Liana. Liana. We also Anaya. have met Anaya and have... Alviarin. Yeah. Alviarin is black. We met Alviarin? She's in Faldara. Uh, okay. Okay. Now, we've... Yeah, maybe it's about 50%. <laughs> <laughs> and Adelaide and Vandine don't count. They're retired. But they are not black. But they don't count. They're retired. They're coming back. We're spoiling. They're coming back. They're coming out of retirement. For now, they're retired. They don't count. For now. <laughs> There's a lot of black sisters, man. But yes, about so, 50% so of bad. what we've actually met right now are black. So eventually, we'll then create a black tower. But and over that... half of them will end up being black. But some of them won't be willing. Which is a different spoil that I could have gone with today, but not today. We've got to save something. All right. This has been fun. This has been good. I, uh, when we talk about fun and good, you know, we had two people with us in the Discord today. Both of them had to jump out at various points. Jorda was the last one to jump out, and the last thing he posted was, LOL, butt hurt. I mean, right there, when you know, you know. That's humor to end with. That's it. Absolutely. And with that, I will talk to you next time.